Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, going to be talking for 20 minutes about MapRoulette. Um, this is the first time I've spoken about MapRoulette, I think since 2014, so it's been around for a little while, actually since, um, since 2013. So I wanted to go a little bit into uh, the, the, the past of it. Um, I always like talking about the past um, because it's, uh, it teaches us lessons that we, uh, so we won't make mistakes in the future, as you all know. Um, so let's start there, maybe. Um, I'll do past, present, future. It seems like a logical kind of progression. So we have to go back all the way to 2012. Who was around in OSM for the license change? <laughs> Not that many people, but still enough um, to know how painful that was. So we changed the license in 2012 from uh, Creative Commons um, Attribution um, and um, CC by SA share alike, yes, to ODBL. Uh, I won't go into any of those details, but it left, um, it left quite a mess on the map because um, we had to remove a lot of contributions by uh, people who didn't agree to that license change or we couldn't reach. So we lost about, by the best I could find, about 1.2% of the data, uh, which seems like an insignificant amount, but it's a lot of data. Um, and it left messes like the ones you see there. Um, so, and OSM back then was small, much smaller than it is today. We had um, about 1.2 million registered users, but only a few hundred thousand overall uh, contributors. Uh, that still seems like a lot, but that there were lots of places in the US that had no local mappers at all. So we needed a tool to focus some of those efforts to, uh, to fix the map, right? Um, so there were quite a few tools that, that popped up. This is, was an interesting one um, that basically had a routing grid between all major US cities uh, and the, the greener it was, the, the better the routing was with, with OSM data compared to some reference, uh, reference distance. Uh, so you could see that slowly turning from red to green as the, as the remapping effort uh, progressed. But still, it, it left you with a feeling of like, well, okay, this might be green, but did we actually fix everything? Uh, there might be minor rows that still are a mess. Um, there might be stuff still missing that was not captured here. Uh, so I came up with this idea that was that back then called the remapatron. Um, so basically serving up one task at a time and, um, and uh, fixing a lot of stuff with, the, with the, the help of the entire community. This was all US focused because I just moved here and I was very excited about improving the map here. Um, so we, we fixed about 11,000 roads in a, in a month's time. So I was like, well, this is, there's something there, you know, we can, we can do something more with this. Uh, so we tried some more. Um, we tried some more different uh, types of fixes, uh, all to do with road network. I'm always a little partial to that because it's just something that I um, that I that I care about in OSM. Um, so the the recipe turned out to be to to serve up problems that are very specific. Um, I, I show a few examples here of stuff that we that we did after the license change remapping, uh, connectivity errors. Um, th those are now. Uh, also um, detected by ideas you've just seen if you if you were here for the t talk before. So a lot of this, a lot of these checks are now built into the editors. Back back then, they definitely were not. Um, Zorro fixes is what I called one of them, where you have very sharp angled roads. Um, that's that was also something that was um, fairly common. People drag stuff by accident and then they upload it and they never look back. So those things those things still appear in OSM. Um, lane counts was a um, another one that that was interesting. Um, so that was an interesting tool. Another kind of um, other motivation for this is um, is kind of that there's a lot of mappers that operate kind of on the um, um, on the on one side of OSM where they're they're either either very casual mappers or they're like hit and run mappers. So people who map only once, um, you could see those here if you were at the if you were at a Jennings and Seth talk yesterday. You saw this diagram yesterday. Where you see basically uh, on the on the horizontal axis the the date of people's first edits and then the date of the last their last edit um, on the vertical axis. So the that thick kind of hard, uh, diagonal line uh, is basically the people who only map once or for a very short amount of time. Uh, whereas the people all the way at the bottom of the uh, chart are the people who started mapping and then are still mapping today. So you see that a lot of mappers are very are kind of people who only map once, maybe uh, maybe a couple times, maybe for a few days, and then stop and never come back again. And then you see that also kind of represented in this in this uh, chart here is also uh, made by uh, by Jennings for one of his one of his um, one of his um, uh, articles. 
um, that show kind of the, the, con the contributors, the distribution between casual contributors and, um, and um, kind of heavier contributors, as if, if you will. So a lot of people don't, 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 really, um, don't really contribute all that much. Um, this is another way to look at it. A lot of people register for OSM, 5.6 million at the moment, um, but only a small percentage actually continue to do any mapping at all. So this ex exacerbates that, that I, I mean, I don't know if you would consider it a problem, I do. Um, this is a very old slide from, um, it's still, the, 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 the numbers are still sort of the same. This was made by, uh, Cloud, who remembers CloudMate? <laughs> um, so basically mappers and non-mappers, um, like it's about, this is 23%, back then it was 29%, people who register um, and actually continue to map. So there's a huge amount of people that are interested in mapping, may map more if given the right tools. And I think ideas done as fantastic job at kept getting getting more people engaged and keeping them engaged in mapping with the tutorials and making mapping much easier um, but there's I think map roulette also serves that function at least I hope it does the, to keep people to keep people engaged um, in mapping and making it making it more fun to do small contributions not a huge commitment um, to, to time um, in mapping uh, so that's another sort of um, alternate motivation for that um, so all that, you still don't know what map roulette is. I guess I should ask, how, who of you have actually used map roulette? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so more than half. Um, who, have you, um, who of you have actually created tasks in map roulette? Okay, yeah, so that's still a good amount. So I'll go into all that. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what map roulette looks like today um, versus what it looked like in 2013, uh, what it can do, and especially kind of focusing on the stuff that they can do kind of to create tasks and for organizations to organize their work using map roulette, which is something that's happening uh, quite a bit now. Um, so again, this slide, I mean, the user interface is completely different, as you can see. Um, so the, the, the first thing we added is, is challenges, right? So um, giving the community the ability to create their own tasks, not just me doing it. This is one of the first requests I get, like, can we do this ourselves? Why, why are you making all these challenges? Why, why do you, um, what is your special um, kind of uh, power? Uh, well, there is none. <laughs> so I'm giving people, um, the first thing we did is give the people, give people the power to create their own challenges. Um, there's currently 4,300 challenges live in, uh, in MapRoulette, some of them very small, some of them very large, a total of 2 million tasks to, for you to fix, so you can go in now and, and start working on one of some of those 2 million. Um, so it was very, became very important to focus on the, the, what's important, right? What, is, uh, what, are the interesting, uh, what are the interesting tasks for you to work on? So we have a, we have a list um, that basically uh, sorts itself by things that are uh, featured. That's still a manual process, like we, uh, we choose and you can tell me which ones I should be featuring. And then the ones that are popular are sorted to the top, but you can change that sorting. And there's a whole toolbar at the top there that says where you can change the sorting for, um, by most popular, by newest. Um, and uh, you can you can filter by various by various uh, measures like uh, the, the category of challenge types of things to fix. Uh, there's a free text box to search. Um, you can you can search for challenges that are only within the current map bounds for the map you see there. Um, and um, difficulty as well. There's easy, medium, and hard challenges, and those are self self described by the challenge creators. Um, so finally, the map, if you zoom in, you'll see, if, you, if, you, if you're zoomed out, you won't see anything but the map itself. But if you zoom in, um, individual tasks locations start appearing. And then you can actually, if you're zoomed in far enough, you can say, okay, well, this is an area that I want to fix everything. And then you can create your own virtual challenge using that button on the top left and say, like, okay, these are the challenges that I want to, or I want my mapping party, or I want my map event to work on this evening or this, uh, this weekend or whatever. Um, so you can create your own virtual challenge on the fly uh, to work on just the tasks that you see at the moment. Um, a quick, quickly, kind of a run through of what it means to solve uh, tasks. So you've selected a challenge. You see this. You see this. Uh, this screen here that shows you kind of a little bit of breakdown of what the, how far along it is, where the where the tasks are, a little bit of a description of what the challenge uh, what the challenge means and what they want you to do. Um, then you you, um, you 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 served a, a random task basically, um, so you, um, you you end up somewhere in the map. You don't really know where. That's kind of the roulette aspect of it. You know, it's it's a random, it's a random um, location within the within the challenge that you chose. In this in this in this case, it's um, it's um, again sort of a Zorro challenge. Uh, this one is a little. Uh, a little this one is uh, is for Southeast Asia, various countries. Um, 
so one thing I should one thing should quickly mention that all the little all the little um, boxes here are widgets, so you can change your layout. If you have a larger screen, you can fit much more stuff on it. You can make ma map bigger. You can remove the map altogether if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend that, maybe. Um, so everything is everything is uh, changed. So here's a, an example of the same task, but in a with a larger screen real estate. So you have much more uh, much more a space to see the history of the task, comments being added, like the pro pro the progress of the admits being made and the challenge altogether. Um, so back to that task, you click um, one of the completion it, um, buttons. So edit um, uh, edit is uh, is the most common one. You'll you'll be you'll be um, you'll be sent to the editor. Um, you can also say if you can already see that's not an issue based on the description and what you see. That's um, that's um, uh, that. Then you can just skip to the next one, or you can just skip it for other reasons also. Um, so editing uh, means that you basically get sent to either ID or Jostrom that's also configurable. So you get sent to the same editor every single time. Um, you fix the thing. You see that there's also uh, hashtags being added for MapRoulet automatically, um, so that you can keep track or your team can keep track of what's, uh, what, which change sets are relevant. And there's a, right now there's about 500,000 change sets that are tagged this way already. Um, it's still optional. You can turn it off. And then you come back to MapRoulet and you say I fixed it, or you couldn't fix it because you couldn't see, or it was too hard for some other reason. Um, so that's the kind of the, that's kind of the progression of the. Um, okay, let's see. I'm pressing buttons, but it doesn't. Work. Oh yeah, there. So finally, um, you can add optionally. You can add a comment to uh, what you did to fix it, or what you did to to not fix it if you couldn't. Uh, you can add some tags, like um, if there's cloud cover, you can say cloud cover, uh, so the challenge owner can see. Okay, these tasks could, could not be solved for whatever reason. Um, a few interesting ones. So uh, if you were at Ilya's talks yesterday, he talked about MapRoulette a little bit. Um, they use GPS traces to figure out. Um, Parts of the road network in New York City that were not uh, that were not um, that were that were not uh, con congruent with the actual routing, the actual routes that the that the that the drivers took. So um, missing turn restrictions, wrong turn restrictions, wrong one ways. This is uh, the the fun thing about this is that it's based on actual trip data, um, and it helped it helped the ride sharing app to to significantly improve their their their, uh, their experience. Um, and it was very rewarding to solve kind of actual problems that are based on actual kind of um, uh, driven trips, um, and Ilya actually submitted a pull request to do this. Um, one that's local, um, unnamed roads based on based on um, uh, based on conflation with government data. Uh, these are roads that have names in government data, but not in OSM. So you can just go over those and and name them. Um, additional so. Pokemon mappers, this is always fun. Uh, they they tend to map OSM for very specific purposes to get more of those the things that you want in Pokemon. Um, so this is a global challenge to clean up after them. As you can see, there's still a lot of work to be done, so please join that one as well. And don't map for to get Pokemon things in general. Um, so a little bit about those organized editing efforts. Um, so we have, um, I, I'll go over these three things. Uh, first, Kind of projects. Uh, so projects can organize multiple challenges. So you have you have a you have a view of a whole group of challenges that your that your team might may, may be running or your mapping group may be running. You can see all the you can see the progress overall and the comments that have been made on these challenges. Uh, you can you can have you can have a full view of all the challenges combined and how they're doing. Um, so you can create uh, you can create and manage all the challenges in one in in one place basically. Um, the challenge creation itself is all kind of wizardized, so you can uh, it, it takes you through four steps of uh, kind of adding the name, adding the actual task data as GeoJSON. You can also use Overpass to create challenges, so you don't even have to have um, a GeoJSON file ready. Um, so if you're um, there's Overpass, um, Min had did a good talk yesterday about Overpass um, that you should watch if you're if you're interested in that um, if you're interested in creating challenges that way. You can set priorities, and then um, and then also um, kind of the, the base map. If you have a, you can even set custom base maps if you have custom tiles that you want to serve to your users. And then you can kind of download all the tasks data. You can you can inspect and filter all the tasks that you that are uh, that are already there. I see a burn down chart of how it's doing, um, and like a spider chart of how many things are fixed versus um, marked uh, marked too hard, and all those things. Um, a recent addition is that you can also do uh, you can also do review, um, so you can volunteer as a reviewer to review other people's work, and you can also uh, mark your individual tasks or all the tasks that you solve as uh, as needing review. 
And then if you're volunteer as a reviewer, you can see a, a screen like this and you can start reviewing other people's work. Um, and uh, basically how, what that looks like is um, you get a similar view, but you can, uh, you can view the change set in OSM Cha um, and you, or you can see the, the OSM diff and, uh, and you can kind of in, uh, inspect the work and, and see if they did the job that they were supposed to do. This is all, also great for teams that have QA uh, built into their processes. Um, few numbers and then I'll go into the, into the future real quick. Um, so like we have five, half a million tasks solved since the launch of MapRelate 3, which is a little over a year ago. Um, a total of 1.5 million tasks solved since the beginning. Um, so mappers stay on the site an average of 35 minutes. So it is actually a way for, to keep mappers pretty engaged. And that's the, I think that's one of maybe the most important metric that I, that I can think of. Um, we have 55,000 monthly page views, so tasks that are being viewed every month and 3,300 um, unique visitors. So a tiny little bit about future. I'm gonna spend a couple more minutes. Um, one, I guess one of the most significant things that we added, maybe since the beginning even, is, uh, is quick fixes. So this is basically eliminating the whole editor uh, part of it. So you, you modify OSM features from within MapRoulette give in, give, um, based on suggestions from others, uh, from the challenge creator. Um, so the mapper can then accept, reject, or amend the suggestions as they are being given. Uh, the example you see here is uh, changing a speed limit from 60 to 70, for example. And this would be based on, for example, mapillary image or some government data, maybe other external data source. Right now, you can't see those uh, those things yet. That's something we that's something we want to add, perhaps in the future. Um, it's only tag changes for now, but we're looking at geometries as well. This is what that looks like. You can uh, accept, reject, and you can see uh, have a clear view of the changes that are um, of the changes that are um, that are being proposed. You can also go in and, and expand that a little bit to get a more complete view of the tags that are already there. Uh, you can even go in and kind of modify those. This is not live yet. Um, this is something that we're going to do very soon. Uh, you can even inspect and copy the the OSM change XML if you want to take this to some other place to review it. Um, somehow, so this is for the more advanced kind of use cases. Um, potential uses for this is um, is basically kind of adding uh, using using Mapillary or, um, or OpenStreetCam detections, like I said, um, add features based on machine learning. This is also going to be a, very, a bigger and bigger one. Um, Brian already um, kind of gave, put it, uh, gave a reference to Rapid, um, and basically to bridge the gap between automated imports and human work to kind of get, do more of a quick validation of, uh, of, of suggested changes. Uh, related to that mobile, um, the UX for that is ready. Um, it's, this would be great to solve quick fixes on the bus or on the train or if you're waiting for your coffee or whatever. Um, connecting, like the future opportunities for that are, are, are I think, pretty interesting. You can, you can connect um, on the ground in armchair mappers by kind of creating tasks on the fly, say you're mapping and, and there's no opening hours for, for a store that you're looking at. You can ask, you can ask a MapRoulette mobile user, okay, can you snap a picture of this building? And that would be, then be a task that would pop up for the mobile user and look, okay, I'll snap a picture. Anyone can snap a picture. You don't even need an OSM account for that. So you get more people involved in helping to map by, by creating tasks on the fly. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's, I think, a very pretty exciting uh, future development to have more people involved in, in OSM editing. Um, some other things we're thinking about, um, better support for mapping teams, like uh, look, at, look at more performance per, per team member, uh, progress, uh, progress of challenges and reviewing, um, as enhancing those, um, th that functionality. Um, quick fixes uh, to include geometry as well, um, and some, some other things that we're thinking about here. Um, live challenges to continuously fake problems that keep popping up in OSM. And of course, like MapRelate is open source, so you can, um, we all, always welcome contributions. Um, finally, um, we're gonna have a little competition. Um, I, have some, I have some grand, uh, grand prizes here. I have a shrink wrap copy of uh, Microsoft Encarta World Atlas 1997 um, for the person who, um, who maps the most in the next week. The, sec the runner up can win, uh, this is Encarta 96, so it's a little less valuable maybe. And also it's not, also it's not shrink wrapped. You will need uh, Windows, um, I, um, I think it will work on Windows Millennium, but probably not Windows 7, so. Um, but these are very desirable uh, items and um, I will ship them anywhere in the US to the person who, uh, who goes to this, uh, who participates in this, in this uh, competition. Um, from the orange vest mapping, 
um, crowd, uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope you all use MapRoulette um, and uh, create some challenges and participate in this, um, in the awesome mapping community that we are in this way. Thank you very much. It does? Yeah. Oh, we just got confirmation. Ankara will work on Windows 10. <laughs> cool. You might need to zoom your display a little bit because, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, can you update the GeoJSON for a, a roulette challenge you created? Can you do that like automatically? Is there an API? Like, yeah, so. Daily updates to add or like yes, good question. So there is an, I didn't even mention the API. There is, MapRoulette does have an API for advanced for advanced users who want to programmatically add update challenges and uh, want to connect to their own systems. So this is something that, is, um, that has been around for a while and is, is, uh, is, is, um, and is not very well documented, um, but I'm happy to go into it in more detail if you want. Um, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is a good way to kind of create more challenges and keep them up to date. You can actually kind of add and remove tasks um, as, as, your, as, your, um, as your kind of um, detection um, detections change um, or uh, grow. Yeah. Any other questions? Can you show the, sorry, can you show the URL? The URL for, for the, the, for the yeah, competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, this is the most, maybe the most important slide of the deck. <laughs> is there another question back there? Yeah. Uh, Next to it, Skill Baby, is this part of the big thing? Yes. Or Well, so it's, yeah, it's, well, it is my baby. Um, <laughs> and um, it's, yeah, it's grown up a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> but it is. I'm, work, I'm working with other folks to, uh, to, to kind of maintain it and help it grow. Um, but we're always looking for, for more people to, um, to, um, uh, to contribute uh, to, the, to the code and make it even better. Uh, especially people who are looking for it to make it more attractive for, for teams to use, which is something that we've seen a lot of. Um, yeah, so that's, that's going to be, that's going to be one of the, one of the big kind of strands of development, I think, going forward. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the overpass queries part. How quickly does those updates like, Yeah, so currently they don't get refreshed automatically. Um, you can manu manually refresh, refresh any challenge. Um, uh, that's, that's something that's actually a pretty interesting thing to kind of make more, uh, make, make automatic to, as I was talking about those live challenges, you know, that idea of having a challenge that continuously updates based on the live OSM data. Um, uh, that, that, would, that would be an interesting um, uh, addition. I think there's actually already a GitHub ticket for that. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, what have you learned from other crowdsourcing efforts and how have you applied those to the Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so I think, um, I think one imp one important um, one important lesson has really been um, kind of the fact that crowdsourcing there's there's a lot of room at the bottom. I'm, that's that's kind of that's kind of that's unnecessarily derogatory. It's not the bottom, but the people who are the most casual. A lot of crowdsourcing is relies a lot on a lot of on a large amount of casual um, contributors and then a very small amount of very um, very, very, very heavy contributors. Those heavy contributors usually don't need much of encouragement, but those casual um, contributors can use all the encouragement they can get. And I think, like I said, MapRoulette um, was motivated in part by the fact that um, we can do much more to engage those casual contributors and have them, um, have them uh, give them more instruments to want to want to contribute. So I think that's kind of the I think that's the most important lesson that I've taken away from uh, from other from other projects or what you see in things like Wikipedia contributor contribution profiles in um, in um, in those kinds of projects as well where you have kind of most most of the people are kind of lurkers and never make that step the first step kind of the zero to one uh, how, how do you how do you become a contributor is um, that's often kind of the tricky the trickiest one and I hope MapRoulette helps a little bit to, um, to 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 make that make that step a little bit easier. All the way in the back. Yeah, that, that's all very open to discussion still. So the mobile UX is is pretty much ready, um, but it's not like um, you can't really solve challenges in ID or JOSM very well. So it's ideally suited for those quick fixes where you can just kind of tap yes or no, uh, based on a very clear evidence of something being something being not right. 
but I would the, the direction I see it going is that you actually, like I said, one of the one of, I think one of the in, interesting uh, opportunities is having those um, giving people tasks, right? So any mapper could give any other mapper a task to solve in the field. So you create these deeper connections between armchair mappers and uh, and mappers who go out or people who are just not necessarily mappers but anyone go out anyone who wants to contribute while they're just walking around or biking around or maybe even driving around um that's um that's going to be because mobile kind of the that's the kind of the people are on the ground are very that that's at the core of what osm is right mapping on the ground what's on the ground and and benefiting from local knowledge and I think if MapRoulette can play a role in in, uh, in 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 capturing more of that local knowledge, I mean, we have MapLary, we have OpenStreetCam, those are all great projects, but they're also um, uh, they're also um, kind of not. Kind of MapLary recently added the, um, what's it called their projects where you can in, where you can invite people to um, to to contribute in a certain in a certain place. Uh, I think that's kind of the similar direction that I'm thinking of, right? Where you can. You can you can task mappers with very specific things um, um, to 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 do, and you don't need a you don't need a lot of kind of mapping knowledge to do it necessarily. Yes. Uh, I'm thinking of like maps, but uh, mm -hmm. is there a way to change maps so maybe the maps that are given to you will be used, like yes or no, mm -hmm. that then you create more complex maps? Hmm. That's I, that's a, that's an interesting one, and I I don't really see. Um, that you could do that today, um, you could you could have you could you could point people to kind of if you have a progression of difficulty, um, you could um, the, the the instructions are are can be very task specific. You can add a different instruction for each task if you want to. There's tagging, there's kind of templates that you can use. Um, you see, so you could point people. Okay, if you fix this, then you can move on to kind of a more complex thing that is uh, that is that is um, that is that that pertains to the same area or the same feature. Um, it's interesting. I don't think it's been tried yet, but it's 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 possible. Yeah, for sure. It's a good point. Thanks. So you just mentioned the uh, people put a comment in the post. So are those comments that you uploaded to the website? Right. The comments are internal to MapRoulette. So it's basically just a, a discussion around specific tasks. Uh, so it's not uh, it's not at the moment connected to the to the comments in OSM. I think also because we don't interact with OSM in that way. The um, the, um, the we, we own the only permission we request in MapRoulette is uh, reading reading user preferences just to get the basic username and user profile. We store very little about users, and we don't request any write access to OSM at the moment. Um, but f of course, for those quick fixes, they will have to change. People will have to allow uh, MapRoulette to uh, to edit OSM on their behalf. So I think, I think it will have to be it for the moment. I'll, I'll be around for the rest of the weekend. Um, I'm hap always happy to chat about MapRoulette. Oh, one last thing. Um, if you come to me in the break and um, commit to doing at least 10 tasks, you, can, you, can, uh, you get your pick of any of these nice vintage roadmaps. Um, <laughs> so there's even more prizes. Um, come, come see me in the break. Tell me that you're going to do at least 10 tasks. And um, and uh, you you you'll get there's stuff from all over the U.S. So um, I, have, I have like 30 of them. <laughs> <laughs>